If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, what is the scariest experience you've had in your life that you believe can only be attributed to the paranormal? When I was like 3 or 4, my grandmother passed away and soon after all of my extended family flew in town to have the funeral. A week after the funeral, some relatives were still in town, including my uncle and his family. My grandmother wanted us to sell the house after she passed, so my family did exactly that. It was hectic cause we were trying to pack everything up meanwhile everyone still had to go to work and school. On one of the days that we had to pack up the house, my parents both had work, my older cousins had school, and my uncles and aunts had jobs slash other stuff. However, my uncle, grandma's oldest son, was available to watch me for a couple hours so he did. According to him, I asked him to go to the bathroom while he was watching TV. The closest bathroom was in my grandparents' old room so I went there. When I came back, I asked my uncle who the nice lady was on the bed. He kinda played along with it because he might have thought it was an imaginary friend or something. He asked me questions about her to entertain me. I described her as dark-haired, kinda white, and wearing a blue nightgown. When I said that, my uncle freaked out because my grandmother always wore a light blue nightgown to sleep. After that, my uncle and I left the house and waited outside for my parents to come back home. When I was about 8 and staying with a friend I woke up from a dream that my dog died crying and asked to go home, this had never happened before and never happened again. The parents got me to go back to bed. I did and in the morning when I got home my family were sitting silently in the living room. I found out that my dog was run over late the night before at the same time, or around about, I had the nightmare. I was so shocked that I couldn't even cry. I don't know what to think about it but here it goes. Around 8 year ago I was in vacations with my parents and my cousin. My sister couldn't come as she had just started her first job, so she stayed home by herself. When we were children, both my sister and I, used to be really close mainly because we shared room for my first 7 ninths years. We used to have our code with taps for asking things like are you already sleep? Are they, our parents, sleep? Stuff like that. She is also always doing something or looking for something to do, always being the first up. So when she was up and wanted me to wake up she would place her face as close to mine as possible and stare at me. I don't know for how long she would stay like this but I can clearly remember multiple times waking to her doing this. I, of course, would shout or at least panic until realizing it was her. I guess it was fun for her and I have to admit, I also did it a couple of times. So now we are in our trip it has been at least 10 twelfths years since the last time my sister pulled this prank on me. My sister and I are not as close as we used to be, we have certainly grow a little apart but we still love each other. It was the last night in our trip before heading back to our city, and we had just find this nice hotel close to the pyramids in Palenque which meant no cell phone service. We were sharing a room, my mom and dad in the first bed and my cousin and I in the other one. At some point around 4 am I woke up to the same old sensation, that someone is staring at me so I opened my eyes and I could clearly see a face. My immediate reaction was to shout waking my mother up. I have to say that this sensation by itself is really scary but years of experience with my sister waking me up like this took the threat away, so despite of my shouting I wasn't scared, it was just too familiar. My mom turned on the light and asked me what happened. I told her that I was pretty sure my sister had just woken me up I know it didn't make any sense but I felt it was her, though I cannot say I saw her face. I just saw a face and then it disappeared, immediately. My mom is really superstitious so she couldn't sleep after that because she felt something was odd, and I couldn't sleep thinking of my sister. Later that day, in the morning, we noticed we all had lots of missed calls. My sister was involved in a really bad car accident, luckily she only had minor injuries. To this day I don't know what to make out of this experience, my brain tells me it was just a coincidence. On the other hand it's the only way I would have thought of my sister sleeping. It was just so real, so between both of us. As an extra, on our previous visit to Palenque, my parents, my sister and I, at the ruins we could hear some drums. My parents said that it was raining and we were playing with the ponds and at some point the drums started playing, our curiosity made us follow the sound getting us deeper and deeper in the jungle. I can't remember why we stopped but when we finally made it to the exit and asked the security guy about the music, he said, so you heard the drums as well? He then proceeded to tell us that a lot of people had heard them at different times and they didn't know the source of it. I woke up from a nap to the sound of my girlfriend sobbing somewhere else in the house. I got up to see what was wrong and determined the sound was coming from downstairs. I followed the sound down the spiral staircase all the way to the finished basement. The sound was definitely coming from the little half bath at the bottom of the stairs that we rarely used. The door was closed, which it never was, and I couldn't see any light under the door but the sound was very loud from the bottom of the stairs. 
It was about this time that I started to fully wake up and remembered my girlfriend had been leaving for the grocery store when I was starting my nap. I could see her parking spot from one of the basement windows, she wasn't back yet. I called her name and the sobbing instantly stopped. The bathroom was empty when I finally got the courage to check. Before my dad died a couple years ago, one of his mantras was you're loved. He'd say it to us all the time. At his funeral, I ended my eulogy having the audience say you are loved, in his honor. So, it's an important phrase for me and my father's memory. Now for the freaky part. I saw a thread on Reddit where Op was grieving and I shared a story about my dad and a gift he'd given me a bag of silver stones with cheesy compliments engraved on them. He'd written a note about how when he was younger and just striking out on his own, he and his buddies had talked about how nice it would be to have a compliment vending machine, that would give you words of encouragement whenever you needed it. He concluded by saying anytime you need a pick me up pull out a stone and imagine me saying it. So I leave the comment and I immediately got a reply that said only you are loved. I was shocked. Once my brain restarted itself, my first thought was, maybe they know me? So I checked out their comment history to see if I could figure out who they were. Turns out, it was a bot. It had been programmed to randomly selected one comment Reddit wide every few seconds and left that comment a random compliment. So out of millions of possible comments, this bot randomly selected not just my comment, but the one comment where I shared a personally meaningful story about my dad and random compliments and then it randomly selected a compliment that was super meaningful to my dad and our family. It honestly felt like my dad's spirit commandeered a Reddit bot to tell me hey. It still gives me chills. The sheer astronomical odds of that happening the way it did astound me. I was staying the night at a friend's house when I was about 13. We were watching The Shining with her older sister and another friend when I saw a black figure in my peripheral vision. I turned my head all the way to the right and watched this solid black figure in the shape of a man wearing a cowboy hat walk from one side of the house to the other. I didn't say anything to my friend when it happened. I thought maybe my mind was just playing tricks on me because the movie was scary. After the movie my friend's sister and others all left the house to stay elsewhere. My friend's parents were out of town. In the middle of the night I woke up to someone stomping up the stairs toward the room we were sleeping in. We thought maybe her sister had just come home and ran upstairs to bed. We went to check and found no one. We heard the stomping a few more times, and then a really loud bang on the wall, the wall between our bedroom and the outside of the house, on the second story. My friend looks me straight in the eyes and says did you see the man earlier? I swear no one else was home and my friend was just as terrified as I was. We hid under the blankets and didn't come out until we could see sunlight. This isn't my only encounter with unexplained slash paranormal things happening. My dad's house when I was a kid was scary to say the least, haunted if you believe in the kind of thing. We used to see a man in a military uniform in the long hallway leading towards my brother's room. The security alarms would go off for no reason like someone was opening and closing a door over and over again. And one time we had a decorative plate fly off a shelf and hit a mirror clear across the room. I don't know if I would say the only possibility is paranormal, but it was damn weird. I have had several dreams similar to what I am posting. I've been a caver in Florida for about 13 years, since I was about 6, and I've been to a lot of caves. Never been afraid before this to go in one. When I was about 7 or 8 years old, I started having this reoccurring dream. I would have it at least twice a year, always the same even though I would realize I was dreaming after the first few iterations. I would fall asleep and dream of being in a cave and going into this little hole in the bottom. Inside I would see a 10 to 15 foot long corridor about 2 to 4 feet high. At the end it would always turn left, and I always saw a bent red stop sign at the end, like someone ripped off the top 2 feet and tossed it in. But I would always follow the corridor. I would turn and walk past the sign despite being scared, despite many times knowing what was there, and the corridor would start descending, quickly opening up into a large vertical chamber with the path leading down and a corkscrew. Everything became blurry at this point, but it was always the same. I saw trash scattered on the walls. I saw the pit leading down to a curved floor. I saw things, undefined, animals or people or something else at the bottom. And I saw my family, each with one of the things, being tortured and killed. Every time. And I could never do anything. After I saw that, I would be stuck for a few seconds until I felt more than saw everything turn and look at me. And I would wake up. Not like a normal dream where you just drift to consciousness or a nightmare where you bolt up in fear, but like something pushed me out. Like I wasn't supposed to be there. So I have this dream multiple times a year until I turned 15. My father decided to take us to some caves we never had been before. One of which was Dog Drop. 
It was likely named so because someone either threw their pet in there or a coyote fell in and the body was later discovered. Dogdrop had a roughly 30 foot rappel straight down to enter. I went down with my brother while my father waited up at the top. There was a hole in the ground. I started to feel uneasy though I didn't know why. So I followed my brother into the hole. I felt worse as I moved down, and when I looked up I saw the same corridor, the same turn, the same wall, the same bottles at the corner. And I instantly was hit with this overwhelming sense of nausea and fear and being watched and everything was screaming at me to leave. I froze and must have made some noise because my brother turned around and asked what was wrong. I managed to say I wanted to leave now and climbed out as quickly as I could, followed immediately by my brother. We packed up and left, never have gone back and never will. Haven't told anyone what actually happened, just said I wasn't feeling well, and they forgot pretty quickly. The thing that really makes it creepy for me is I have never had the dream again. Year after year I would have it consistently, but it just stopped after that. But I still remember it all. And I still feel afraid, almost an external fear, when I think of it. A few months after my grandpa died, I was chilling with some friends in a hot tub, drinking, and we got onto the subject of my grandpa and his passing. I told them stories he told me of him fighting in World War I and World War II, and how badass he was. Well, I get out to go pee, because I'm not a fucking animal who pees in the hot tub, and go inside. On the small table outside of the bathroom is a few pictures of myself and my parents, my grandpa and grandma, and one of the only photos we have of grandpa in uniform in Germany, edit, allied forces. It's the only one that's face down. I figure one of us must have drunkenly knocked it down or one of the cats was fucking about, so I flipped it back up and went on my business. About 20 minutes later, had to refresh the beer, go back inside and the photo is now the only one standing, all other photos are down. I flip them back up and figure one of my friends is messing with me. Go back outside and tell them what happened, and none admitted to it. Everyone had been pissing outside the tub into a snowbank off the porch, confirmed by off-color snow. I tell them to be serious with me because it's actually disrespectful of my grandpa's memory to mess with his photo and my family's photos like that, and everyone confirmed they weren't fucking with them. I had been the only one going inside to piss and get beers, always getting for friends too, so this was odd. I go back in again, and this time I have consciously made note that no one had entered or exited the house since the last time I came out. All the pictures have been placed on the floor face down, except for uniformed grandpa, and the photo is upside down at the frame. A few years ago, the day before my birthday, I had a really weird dream. I was in my mother's kitchen with my mother, duh, only there were no walls and just a dark expanse all around. I walked up to her and asked, so, how did he die? She replied, he woke up dead. I woke up at that point, around 4.30 am according to my phone, and wrote this down in my dream journal beside my bed, which I was keeping at the time in an attempt to spur lucid dreaming, it was not successful. My first lucid dream occurred entirely by accident two months ago. A few hours later, maybe after eight, after the sun was up, certainly, my brother called me, crying, to say that our uncle S was dead. Apparently, my aunt S woke up around six o'clock to wake him up for work as usual, only to find him blue-faced and cold in the bed next to her, choked on his vomit. This was a completely unexpected death, he had no medical conditions that would have worried my aunt, his sisters, or his mother, never mind the rest of the family. Even the autopsy came back inconclusive, they couldn't find any reason medical, neurological, or chemical as to why he suddenly puked in his sleep and didn't wake up from it, though my aunt did say that the coroners estimated he'd been dead one to two hours by the time she got up, right around the time I woke up from the woke up dead dream. I was walking into my bedroom, just having closed the door. I felt a chill down my neck, and was frozen in fear. At that moment, my necklace that I had been wearing fell to the floor. I don't know why but I knew something strange and terrifying had just happened. I picked up my necklace from the floor, and it was still clasped. When I was 18 and 8 months pregnant with our first child I woke up in the middle of the night, completely frozen, with something telling me to move my head to the right, which was the direction my husband was laying, as well as having the crib for our soon-to-be little bit being on that side as well. There was a woman standing at the end of the bed, right between the crib and our bed. She put her finger up to her mouth shushing me and then touched my husband's face and hair, and gazed at the crib. She then proceeded to sit on my bed and cry while staring at the crib. I'm frozen the entire time, and then she just leaves, like goes out the door and leaves. Too scared to talk, I curl up to my husband and cry myself back to sleep. The next day I tell him what I experienced the night before, and while describing the woman he starts to tear up and I ask what's wrong. He goes and pulls out his family album. Come to find out he has an aunt who is rarely discussed, 
She was murdered by her husband when my husband was nine years old. He was also her favorite while she was alive. Before him and I got together he always said he never wanted to get married or have kids. My guess is that she just wanted to check the situation out, and was overcome with emotion about the growing he had done in his 24 years of life. I've seen her a few times since, mainly around the times when we are about to have a huge life shift, buying a house, having our second etc., and our interactions have a totally different vibe now. She isn't threatening or intimidating anymore. He'll see her, she will not, I will not, and then she will keep observing things. Our oldest, 3 yo, always talks about the lady that looks like Papa and our youngest, 10 Mo, who is her namesake is constantly playing with something that isn't there, overall it's been a cool experience. 10 tenths would be willingly haunted again. When I was younger my parents got me a bunk bed so I could have friends come over and spend the night. You know try to be the cool kid in elementary school who invited all his friends over. Well it was a trick eventually soon after my uncle moved in with us and he crashed on the bottom bunk while I slept on the top. My uncle also happened to be bartending at the time so he often came home really late like 2am for example. Sometimes a bit intoxicated sometimes not. Well one night after he comes home and wakes me up from all the noise he makes I tell him goodnight then roll over and try to fall back asleep. After falling back asleep maybe 30 minutes later I feel the most unbelievable strong grasp on my arm. Imagine a full grown man taking his hand and wrapping it around your entire forearm. That's what it felt like for maybe a good 2 seconds then gone. Of course it woke me up freaking out. I looked down thinking it was my uncle fucking with me. He was passed out on his stomach. To this day I don't know what caused it. I know for a fact it woke me up so could have been some weird dream where the feelings transferred over into the real world a little bit. My grandmother had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's when I was a teenager. After my grandfather died, she just kept getting sicker. My parents decided to move her in with us so we could keep a closer eye on her. A couple of months later, she accidentally fell and broke her hip, my dad rushed her to the hospital and I stayed home with my mom. My grandmother used to sit in the same spot all day, a big comfy chair in the middle of the living room. At night, after my dad rushed my grandmother to the hospital, I walked through the living room and saw a shadow, a black silhouette of a large man standing behind the big chair. I jumped from fright and as soon as I took my eyes off of it, it was gone. I thought it was just my imagination so I brushed it off and ran back to my room. A couple of hours later, I was in my room and my mom was in the living room watching TV when I suddenly heard her scream bloody murder. I ran to the living room. Her hand was on her chest and she was heaving, her eyes were nearly bulging out. I asked her if she was okay and she said I could have sworn I saw your father standing behind that chair. Needless to say, my dad and my grandfather looked eerily alike. Back when I just started working in a new town, my best friend was studying at uni one town over. We met once a week in the cinema in her town to the sneak preview. One night after the film was over, we said our goodbyes and I hurried to my car to drive home. When I rolled off the parking lot, I was hit by the thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to take the country road home instead of the highway. I shook my head, wondering where that thought came from because taking that way would at least double the time I needed to go home and I had to go to work early next morning. So I headed towards the highway anyway. I'd never been scared of driving before or after that night, but I was almost shaking with fright when I rolled onto the highway. The road was quite empty, but eventually I closed up to a truck. On any normal day I'd just overtake it, but I couldn't bring myself to do so. Somehow that truck meant safety to me. Thoughts crossed my mind about what the last thoughts of people getting hit by wrong way drivers are. Again, no idea where they came from. Right before I reached my exit a wrong way driver passed us by. As of today I have not found a logical reason for my fear that night. I didn't listen to the radio, I had a CD playing. There wasn't music or radio in the cinema as well and it was well before the time of smartphones. Something or someone warned me. I went to a graveyard at about midnight with a group of friends to visit an old friend who died in a car accident. While we were standing around his grave, telling good stories about him, I hear a faint voice of an elderly woman. One of my friends says out loud oh shit, WTF? I stand up and look toward the source. I saw a very old woman, literally dressed in a white tattered nightgown about 100 feet away. She started talking to us. Sir? Get over here now, I need help. We stood still. No one said a thing. The part that weirded me out was that she used the singular word sir when clearly there was five of us. She started walking closer and started speaking again but even louder. Boys, I need your help now. Note the plurality. Then, she literally started running toward us, screaming nonsense. We were all scared out of our minds so we ran back to the car, with this old woman close behind. 
We reached the car, which was a two-door, and everyone got in before me. Including the driver, so the driver's seat was blocking my entrance to the back seat. I yelled as I approached the car and he got out and let me in. Doors slammed and we flew down the small graveyard roads to the opposite side, where the exit was. This is where shit got weird. We get to the other side of the graveyard in like 10 seconds. We're speeding toward the exit, and we approach a curved road that was well lit. And the old lady ran onto the road. No way she ran over there that fast. I see her trying to chase us down and finally she lets out the most terrifying scream I've ever heard. Sounded like she was being murdered slowly and painfully. We fled the scene just seconds after and never returned. Four other friends of mine can testify as witnesses to that night. By far the most terrifying experience in my life. For several years I experienced what is commonly called sleep paralysis the first experience was one of the most terrifying. I was taking a nap on Christmas day, I had the common experience of a visceral buzzing in my ear slash head, and a feeling of terrible evil coming upon me. I awoke, but couldn't open my eyes or move a muscle. I then felt someone grab onto my feet, and start crawling up my body, I felt completely overcome with evil, finally I pushed it all back and opened my eyes, and found myself alone. Similar experiences happened for years, each was terrifying, but almost became commonplace. I discovered that it was sleep paralysis, and someone said the best way to deal with it was to give in to it and not to fight it. One day, I was taking a nap on my bed in the basement, my brother was a couple rooms down in our entertainment room. I felt that familiar visceral buzzing, my eyes opened, but I couldn't move, I decided to let go this time and I gave in to it. As soon as I had done that, my body started to sit up, I saw my arm rising, and one thought dominated my mind. I had to kill my brother. I was halfway up, and panic set in and I pushed back as hard as I could, and eventually woke up panting and terrified. I never gave in to it again. It's lessened over the past few years, but every year or so it will come back. When I was pregnant with my second son I had a very vivid dream my first son had died in his room. In my dream I walked into his room and picked him up, I could feel how cold and heavy he was in my arms, I was screaming and screaming trying to get help but every time I ran through his bedroom door, I'd end up back in his room. I knew I was dreaming but couldn't wake up. I suddenly heard someone very clearly say Mortis, he's fine. Wake up and I opened my eyes to see an elderly man standing in my bedroom doorway, he nodded and walked away. I immediately jumped out of bed, still sobbing and ran through my house turning on lights looking for this man. At first I thought it was my uncle who lived upstairs, but my door was still locked. I realized that I did recognize the man, he was always in my dreams as a child, never spoke just stood there, always in the background and I never thought anything about it until that moment. I checked on my son and brought him back to my bed to sleep. A few days later I was helping my mom go through some old photos she had been given from her family, she was raised by her aunt and her family had been super secretive and possessive of photos and such, we were looking at a picture of a large family sitting around a long table, I recognized my mother's bio mom, my great aunt, great nana and then, there he was. The man from my dreams and who woke me up. Sitting there next to my great nana, same look, same flannel shirt, pens in his pocket and balding head. I pointed him out to my mom, it was her grandfather who passed away when she was a young girl. She was his favorite and wasn't afraid to show it. I explained what had been happening all my life, he was always in the background of my dreams and never said a word until I had my night terror. There was no way I ever saw a photo of him and I had never met him in my life. I have so many paranormal stories, I should really write about them. Tomorrow I'm going to smudge my aunt's house because her son heard laughing at night and his room is freezing cold all of the time. I knew from the very moment I stepped foot in the house that something was amiss with that end of the house. In my late teens I had nightmares quite frequently. That may not be the most accurate term, but it fits to me. They were semi-lucid dreams in so far as I knew I wasn't awake, but I couldn't control what was happening. The nightmares were always different experiences, but I had the same objective in each one, save as many people as I can from what's happening. People around me would be dying from a fire, or being shot, or a wild animal would be killing them and I would have to sacrifice myself to try and save them. The thing was, there was always this thing in my dreams with me. Once it was a doctor with no face, another time it was a bear, I even remember it being the front door to a house once. Whatever it was, it always had the same foreign feeling. I don't think I created it in my mind, I honestly think it came in. It would always be in the wrong place at the wrong time and hinder my objective in the nightmare. This thing would ensure my nightmare took the worst turn possible, then I would get sacrificed in some way and die. I wouldn't wake up like you normally do when the bad thing gets you though. It would continue until I experienced my own death, pain included. 
Then I'd stand up, as a ghost maybe? I still don't quite understand how or why, and just have an overwhelming need to scratch myself somewhere. I'd claw at my leg or back or face and the dream would end shortly after that. The next morning I'd wake up to scratch marks on my body where I scratched myself in the dream. It always freaked me out, but then the dreams went away. Then one night I had a really bad one. I couldn't die, I couldn't scratch itch, and I was getting afraid. My wife, girlfriend at the time, tried waking me up. She says I wouldn't wake up, but I was crying. I vividly remember her waking me up and me being unable to move with a giant shadow looming over our bed. I don't think I'll ever forget feeling that helpless. I told her about it the next morning and came clean about the scratches, she had asked about them before. After that night though, I didn't have the nightmares anymore. They just went away. Last year I found out my wife had talked the father at her church who agreed to come to our apartment and bless the place. I guess he spent 45 minutes in the bedroom and she said she had an uneasy feeling the whole time. I can't say it was paranormal and not just my imagination and me scratching myself in my sleep, but the piece that just bugs me so much is him blessing our place without my knowledge and the nightmares going away after that. I'm not exactly a religious man, but what the actual fuck? I'm shaking now and need to stop writing. 1988. When my daughter was around two years old we moved to a, new to us, four bedroom house. Bedroom number one was for my wife and me, number two was her room. Soon after moving in we noticed that after putting her to bed for the night, we'd hear her talking and laughing long after she should have been asleep. Peeking in after about the third night of this we found her standing at the end of her crib, chattering away with the closet door about five feet away. Typical new parents, we tell her to lie down and go to sleep. This continued for many nights, and then we noticed she was actually holding conversations, talk a little, listen some, answer yes or no or I don't know. When we asked her about it, she said she was talking to the lady in the green dress. This continued sporadically but eventually died down to where if she was continuing the conversations, we weren't catching them. When we asked what she talked about, she either said stuff, or school, daycare, or I don't know. Time passed, her little brother was born. After the initial baby in the parents' room phase, we moved them together into the room. When he could stand on his own, pulling himself up on things, the same thing happened. We'd hear him babbling, and peek in to see him doing the same thing, standing at the end of the crib, talking to the closet, his sister fast asleep in her bed. Again, continues sporadically, slows, stops. Three years go by. Two boys now, so big sister gets her own room and the two boys share the room. Same behavior from the youngest. We have no way of knowing if they discuss this among themselves, but each described a lady in a green dress. In asking them separately, one might mention she has long hair. Son might say she has black hair. If asked if it's long or short, curly or straight, he'd say it's long. And so on in many details. When we heard a new detail from one, and gave a multiple choice for that detail to the other, they'd always agree, belt or no belt, color, shoes, white lady slash black lady slash Indian lady, whatever. At this point though, we're thinking they could all be remembering the same picture from a storybook or something, so. May. Then weird stuff starts happening. Now, the wife and I were both smokers, and the rule was one could smoke outside, or in the bathroom upstairs, which had a ceiling exhaust fan, but nowhere else in the house. One fine cold evening, too cold to go outside for just a smoke, I used this rule. I'd put the youngest to bed, the two older children were downstairs watching a movie. Suddenly I hear them yelling the youngest child's name and running through the house. This makes more sense if you know the downstairs came up into the kitchen, go right in here in the dining room, Go right and you're in the hallway, go right and you're in the living room, go right and you're back in the kitchen. The older two were running this circle and yelling the youngest name in an exasperated way. So I stub out my smoke and exit the bathroom just as the older two were making the circuit again. What's going on you guys? We're chasing, youngest. He's supposed to be in bed. I peek into the bedroom. Yes, he is in bed. No he's not. He just went into the kitchen again. We heard him on the stairs and just saw him run up. He's not supposed to be awake watching movies now so we tried to tell him but he kept going around the corner so we ran after him. So, basically, they glimpsed someone on the steps and chased the figure. Every time they turned a corner in this circuit, they caught just a glimpse of the figure turning the next corner, and continued the chase. My youngest was truly asleep. Turned bedroom number 3 into a study. It was downstairs. One day I'm home in my study, wife at work, kids at school. Someone is pacing the floor above me. A slow walk from one end of the living room directly above me, then back again. 
Since I know no one is home I guess it's my sister-in-law, who has a key and a pension for dropping by from time to time unannounced. I go upstairs, doors are all locked, nobody there. Could be street traffic? But it was exactly the sound of someone walking above, that one squeaky floorboard and everything. I mentioned this to my wife. Oh, you heard the walking man. When I stayed home sick that day last month I heard it all the time. Someone walking back and forth in the living room, but nobody ever there when I checked. Okay, so we got that going for us, which is nice. I'm wondering how to enlist this character to push a vacuum cleaner while he's at it. No more green lady chats, no more phantom kids running around the house. The walking man is heard from time to time but I've learned to ignore him. He doesn't answer to questions or anything like that. We've left out pen and paper, nada, okay, we're cool, he's cool, whatever. 2000. We're moving, just need a bigger house. The realtor assures us we don't have to mention the other residents to prospective buyers, so that's nice. Most of the stuff is packed up, moved into storage so the house shows well. Someone buys it and we start packing the last of everything so we can move later in the week. With the shows well it just looked. Roomy. Now it actually looks like a place someone is leaving. My oldest son, still in the number two room, the green lady room bedroom, where he shares bunk beds with his younger brother, gets up in the night to use the bathroom. In the living room, clearly visible down the hall, is a tall man standing and staring at the wall, his back to my son. My son said he knew instantly it wasn't me. This tall figure begins to turn slowly towards my son. My son changes his mind about using the bathroom and runs back into his own room, where there's a woman sitting on the floor. In her lap is a small child. They're both looking at my son, who at this point is screaming his head off and running into our room slash bed slash covers. So we check, and there's nobody else in the house of course. For the next couple of nights, just cause, we set up a video camera in the corner of the living room that would give the most coverage. We don't have motion sensors, and the tape runs 8 hours or so on lowest quality, but in the 2 or 3 nights we taped after bedtime nothing happened, at least nothing caught on tape. And we moved, and that's it. Except. We never really noticed until the move, but when you walk into a house and there's nobody home, you somehow feel that. I'm home, and I'm the first one home, and I'm the only one home. We realized that we had never felt that since 1988, only in the new house. My wife also said it felt lonely being the first one to come home to the new house. So at some level, maybe we all sense something. I don't know. Me and some friends went camping out on a big Indian reserve for a music festival, I was not fucked up. Side note, I had lost my voice a few days before, wasn't sick, just lost my voice, so I had a little shit whistle around my neck and no voice. Two friends and I had walked back to our campsite after some music. It was nighttime, but still very early in the evening. Friend one climbs into the tent, she had taken a Xanax or something and was knocked out quick, I grabbed some water with friend two from the cooler, maybe 15 feet away, and then we walked back to bother friend one's at her tent. I'm a few feet in front of friend two when. All of a sudden, out of thin air, two Native American girls, 10 to 14 years old, sprint past us to the opposite side of the tent and stop at the tent door. I'm about three feet away from these girls. I see, plain as day, that they are wearing authentic Native American clothing. For a split second, I thought they were just kids running around the festival in costume. Then, one of the young girls starts vigorously scratching it at the tent whispering to be let in. Let us in, we have to be let in. Open the door. As they continue to scratch at the tent, they seem to glitch back and forth, up close and far away, with the blink of any eye. Kinda like in the ring. That's when I notice their eyes. Their eyes are completely black. No white. No iris. Black. I am now scared and tears of fear are streaming down my face. Remember, I have no voice, so I couldn't scream em, and that crap whistle wasn't blowing shit. Friend 2 is still standing on the opposite side of the tent, away from the girls and can't directly see what I see, their eyes. She takes notice of me freaking tf out and hurries to stand with me. And it all clicks for her too, this is not right. Friend 2 starts screaming at friend 1 to get tf up. Friend 2 then goes on to tell friend 1 what just happened outside her tent word for word, without any input from my, mute, self. If friend 2 hadn't seen it, I may have thought I got laced. But we both saw the same thing. Needless to say, we piled into our car for the remainder of the night and ended up leaving the next day. My great-grandmother had this house in Mississippi full of cuckoo clocks. Like, she was a collector and had roughly 25 to 30 of them in the living room alone. She also collected old bottles, hundreds of them in the attic from the early 1900s. 
That part is not important other than to give you context that she liked to collect things and wasn't crazy. The one thing she was particular about was having strangers in the house. She hated it. If she didn't already know you, you'd get promptly browbeaten by this angry 90-year-old lady until you left. Saw it happen to solicitors a few times. Well, she she died, whoever bought the house from the estate turned it into a B&B. The running joke was that we bet she was turning over in her grave at all those strangers sleeping in her house. The clocks and the rest of her stuff went to people in the family. So, we're watching the local news one night and see that house, now B&B, caught fire and burned down overnight. When they interviewed the visibly shaken new owner, he said he heard a bunch of cuckoo clocks go off right before the house caught fire. When I was younger my sister started getting into witchcraft and demons. I shared a room with her and slowly I watched her change from someone so down to earth to a person on the verge on insanity. I feel like she was possessed for the duration of my childhood and the reason being was that she began making her own Ouija boards. When it first started out I'll admit I began having some crazy dreams and her attitude towards me and my family had changed. She tried to kill my parents by lighting their room on fire and she'd oftentimes hurt me. She'd speak gibberish in her sleep and laugh sometimes it was weird but things really began to get freaky when she started wanting blood for her rituals. That's where I came in. My parents worked a lot so she usually babysat me. So when parents would leave she'd conduct her rituals in our bedroom, where she'd cut me, smear my blood on her weird board and light her candles then stuff me in the closet. Mind you I was a young child so the dark already scared me enough but the worst thing was when I started hearing whispering. It was coming from all around me in the closet and I could feel like breathing down my back and I remember crying and banging on the closet because I had started seeing things. I'd elaborate more but it's night here and I feel like this will just get lost in the comments. Anyways my sister didn't let me out until I was gasping for air, something was strangling me. From then on I heard voices and continued to see things. I hardly slept at night because I'd continue to hear these voices until the point where I could see literal shadows over my bed. It didn't stop until she moved out. Now whenever I'm sleep deprived I have strange dreams and I'll end up writing down my thoughts and what I see in my dreams instead of taking notes in my classes and I'll be doing it while knocked out. Anyway, I grew up in a house that was built in the 1800s. It was always creepy, especially since it was in a state of restoration slash remodel most of the time I lived there. I hated having to move around that house at night, but only a few weird occurrences stick out. A couple of times I thought I saw someone in our foyer, but it was always out of the corner of my eye. Example, my brother had one of those play school basketball hoops in the foyer and I could swear I saw another little boy playing basketball with him, but as soon as I stopped to look, it was just my brother playing alone. Woke up one night to hear the bathtub running. My alarm clock said it was 1am, so it seemed weird that someone would be running a bath. I walked in and no one was in the bathroom, just the cat staring at the running water, and no, he wouldn't have turned on the water, the mechanism is too complicated for a cat, plus he hated the bathtub. Another night I woke up and had to pee. It took some convincing, because as I said before I hated moving around the house in the dark. I finally got up and as I walked into the hall, I saw a man walking away from me and through the closed door to my parents' room. I just held it the rest of the night, no way could I sleep after that. One night I was home alone, chatting on AIM with my dog at my feet. All of the downstairs rooms have huge pocket doors leading to the foyer, and my back was to the pocket doors. I didn't have the TV or radio on, and I distinctly heard a child's voice call for my dog from the foyer, he had an unusual name, inspired by a popular children's book, so it's a pretty distinctive thing to hear. His ears perked up, and he stared out of the pocket doors but stayed by my feet. I did not turn around until my family got home. Last thing, one night as I was falling asleep, my bedside lamp turned on by itself. I noped the fuck out and slept with my mom like a little wuss. This happened to me way before I started reading No Sleep slash Creepypastas. This note is important because it explains, or rather does not explain, what happens later on. When I was about 14, I had a really vivid dream that took place in my own house. It was still dark outside, about 3 AM, and the house was pitch black save for a lighted candle at the foot of my stairs to my living room. The candle was surrounded by a salt circle. At this point of time I didn't know what the hell was going on, but I did know that anything involving 3 AM, salt circles and lighted candles was not good so I ran back to my room on the second floor. For some reason, I felt compelled to look for something so I looked into the bathroom connected to my room. When I did look in, all I found was a life-size doll soaking in bloody water in my bathtub. My mirror had been shattered and the words found you had been written on the remaining shards attached in red lipstick or something. I was still trying to register WTF was going on when the doll suddenly lunged at me and I woke up. 
I ran to my sister's room to sleep with her that night, and woke up not really knowing what happened. A few months later I came across the instructions for one man hide and seek also on Reddit, and it freaked me the fk out, mainly because what was described was pretty much what happened in my dream, with a doll being soaked in water in my bathtub and something about salt circles. I will never know why I had that dream that night, but I like to think that my soul had decided to play a round of hide and seek with the unknown while I was asleep, and bailed when it turned dangerous. I also had other paranormal experiences in the same bedroom, e.g. sleep paralysis, persistent nightmares, strange noises at night, that stopped the moment I removed this one mirror the previous owner had left me. Still scares me when I think about it. There's a bridge near where I grew up in Bumfuck, Tennessee that is notorious for screaming at people at night. The screams aren't audible to the houses nearby and supposedly you have to sit on the actual bridge to hear it at all, though I personally haven't tested it or anything. The common explanation is that it's a bobcat that lives under the bridge, but people have checked with dogs and such and never find signs of any. Well some friends and myself had heard this story for years all growing up but never tested it. So one night after a few beers we get up the notion we're going to go test the thing. So five drunk guys pile into a beat up car and we drive down and park on the bridge. This is 1.30 am or and it's dead silent out. We sat there for a good 45 minutes and nothing happened. We had the windows down and had started debating whether or not it was all bullshit when the scream happened. We had the lights off and there was a moon so you could see pretty well and there for sure wasn't anything outside the car, but it was fucking loud and it sounded just like a woman with particularly powerful lungs having her skin ripped off right outside the window on the rear passenger side that faced off the edge of the bridge. Now I've heard bobcats in heat while hunting and they do like a scream 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 kind of thing. It's hard to describe but they do it in little repeating bursts. This was a good 3 to 4 seconds extended scream at incredible volume. We tore out of there like a demon was chasing us. A couple of miles down the road we finally stopped and actually processed what happened. My adrenaline was going so badly and I was so scared I was just shaking uncontrollably. One of my friends had actually pissed himself which I'd never seen anyone actually do. One friend immediately left the car and vomited. To give what I think was a good frame of reference to how actually terrifying this was, my friend whose car we were in wasn't even mad at the friend that pissed all over his seat. It was insane. To this day I have no explanation for it. I am an extremely skeptical person, but I've always been interested in researching the paranormal. I have been to a few allegedly extremely haunted locations, but have never had a true experience. I had put together a basic toolkit that consisted of a GoPro, an infrared thermal laser, a Nikon DSLR, a digital voice recorder, digital chosen overtake to eliminate mechanical noise, and a friend of mine had a laser field projector and a spirit box, I hated that thing, that he would bring with him. I looked up some of the most haunted places in Oregon, and not once did I have any sort of experience that couldn't be immediately explained. I had begun volunteering to help with tours of the Portland Underground, otherwise known as the Shanghai Tunnels. Because of this, I was allowed to bring in recording devices, visit sections of tunnel not open to the general public, and I had access to the tunnels between tours where I could investigate alone. On one particular night, we had made use of all the tools mentioned. It's pretty much impossible to identify orbs with still pictures down there because of all the dust and dirt you stir up simply by moving. If the bars above are closed, the tunnels are dead silent. The place is creepy on its own merits. My buddy tried to get something out of his spirit box, had the laser field set up, and while it was quiet I attempted to catch something on my voice recorder. All the while, my GoPro is running and recording. He swore he saw something in front of us that I didn't see. I told him if there was something there, the GoPro will have caught it. I never found out. After we quit that night, I got in my car, closed the door, put my DSLR in its bag, took the GoPro off the strap, placed it in my center console along with my voice recorder and thermometer then drove straight home. When I got home, the GoPro was gone. I tore the car apart looking for it and was never able to recover it. I think if ever I had proof, it would have been on that SD card. As many other people here have said, I'm very skeptical of any paranormal stories. I enjoy reading them but believe pretty much all of them can be explained, or the person made it up. I have had friends swear a place was haunted and were absolutely terrified of it, so I would go alone and sit in the dark to prove them wrong. But this one time, I have no idea what I saw. I worked a summer job at a horse riding camp. After a long day of work, I sat around the campfire with some of the other staff shooting the shit. I should also preface this with the fact that I was completely sober, we were all only about 17 to 19 at the time, at a workplace, so none of us were drinking or anything. 
We sat somewhat close to the barn, and across from us was the huge field for the horses, and at the far end of that was a little forest thing. A thunderstorm started rolling in, but it was getting late anyway, so everyone started heading off to bed until it was just me sitting there. I love storms, so I sat watching it until it was quite close, the edge of it by the tree line. I was just about to head in because, you know, open fields and thunderstorms aren't such a good place to be. That's when I saw what looked like a slow motion lightning bolt going up from somewhere beyond the tops of the trees. Maybe this was just lightning creeping along the clouds at an angle that just looked like up. But it made my hair stand up and a sense of unease filled me. Then suddenly there was a source of light from the bottom of the tree line. At first I thought someone was out there with a flashlight, but it was too high up, maybe twice the height of a person, and the light was very bright, reaching halfway across the field. It bobbed a little, again almost as if someone was walking and looking around with a flashlight, and then started following the tree line, flickering a little as it passed behind tree trunks. After what felt like forever but was probably only a minute or two, the light disappeared. All the horses were in the barn and everyone was sleeping, there is no way anyone was out there. The only thing I can think of is maybe ball lightning, but I'm not sure. It may not be as spooky as other stories on here, but still gives me a very uncomfortable slash unsettling feeling whenever I remember it. Years and years ago, I was laying in my bed, trying, unsuccessfully, to go to sleep. After tossing and turning for about 15 minutes, I decided to just lay still on my back and hope for sweet, sweet sleep. As I lay, facing the ceiling, I feel my bed move slightly. The bed didn't really shake or anything. It just shifted a little. As if my cat had jumped on the bed, which I assumed is what happened. Since I didn't let my cat sleep with me, on account of not wanting to be woken up every 15 minutes by a restless fur ball on my face, I turned on the lights to hunt him down and kick him out of the room. After a thorough search, I concluded that there was no cat in my room, and since I was up, proceeded to see who was on my Yahoo chat at that time of night. My friend Lydia was on, so I proceeded to webcam chat with her. After a bit of chatting, I had not mentioned any of the stuff that happened with the cat and LT, or lack thereof in GT, at this point. I lean over to grab something, which takes me out of webcam frame for a second. When I sit back up, Lydia has this weird look on her face. I ask her what is up, and she tries to blow it off, and says, nothing. I don't want to freak you out or anything. At which point, of course I have to know what the deal is. After much prodding and coercing, she finally agrees to tell me. Just now, when you leaned out of the frame, there was a little girl standing behind you. This was probably about 15 years ago. I have slept with the lights on ever since. An unfortunate byproduct of this experience is that every once in a while, when I am in public, and tell my wife that something creepy happened, she responds with, like that time that little girl was in your bed. Something used to visit me in my dreams in the house I was in before Harvey hit. I found some old 50s style reading glasses in the closet, top shelf. I immediately got a chill when handling them, threw him away. From then on, I would have dreams where I would levitate out of my body towards the dark closet. One time, I was watching a movie saying what if it opened right now? I looked over, and it was open. Now to the scary dreams. They died down after I put two crosses on the wall, and one on the other side of my bed. But I used to have dreams where I was in a house, and something wanted in, something evil. One time it was a man with a knife, extremely angry. Different type of murderous anger than I've ever seen. Kicking and stabbing at the windows. Another time, I was in a dark house. And I was a paranormal researcher. I see this figure of a lady in a yellow dress, she's outside and you can see her twirling. On the patio in her big yellow dress, like a ghostly Disney character. Pretty soon she enters the house and approaches me. As she is smiling while approaching me, she gets in my face and her smile turns into the most evil, vivid grin and face contortions you could imagine. Her face was high definition evil, I could see the grease shining off her face, followed by a painful sense of fear and dread. That closet man, fuck that closet. Since I relocated. I have had no dreams like that, never had any before I moved there either. If you took the crosses off the wall in that room, you were guaranteed to have fucked up dreams. Driving around in the dark and weird backwoods of Ohio in a passenger van with my competitive dance team from Texas. It was around 1am, we had just come from a grueling 6 hour rehearsal, and we had to compete very early the next morning. There had been an accident on the main road getting back to the hotel so our assistant director decided to take us a weird back way so we could get to the hotel and sleep. It's already a little creepy because again, we're from Texas, the part of the state with like two trees every few miles, and it's pretty wooded, the road is unpaved gravel, she has the brights on because we haven't seen a soul in miles and there are no street lights. 
There are also no houses or buildings it's just trees for miles. Out of nowhere, in the middle of the road, is a woman. She has long brown hair, parted down the middle, and is wearing a long white dress. Our director jerks the wheel to swerve and hits the brakes because the woman is frozen like a deer in our brights. We are all startled out of our minds and when we looked out the back window to see what the fuck this woman in a white dress was doing standing in the middle of a dirt road at one in the morning in the boonies, she was literally gone. Just fucking vanished. Scared the absolute shit out of all 12 of us in the van, and we were all convinced La Lorna had followed us to Ohio. Okay so, I really don't believe on ghosts or anything paranormal but there is one experience I've had that I couldn't rationally explain. When I was a teenager I lived in a house in a rural neighborhood that my parents had purchased a few years prior. I can't remember the elderly couple's name that used to own the house previously but let's call them the The Ross, who had both been dead for several years. One day my brother and I were outside playing in the snow, we had the day off from school because of the weather. My dad, my brother and I were the only ones home and my brother and I had been outside for at least 45 minutes. We were having an issue for the previous few weeks where our hot water heater in the basement would randomly shut off while you were in the shower, washing dishes, etc. and my dad would have to run down to the basement and like reset a button or something. Well, while my brother and I are outside playing in the snow, a plumbing truck randomly appears in our driveway and knocks on the door. My dad answered the door in his towel, on his way back up from the basement, talks to him for a moment and then the plumber leaves. My dad is the type of person who would try to fix this problem himself before calling a plumber. I talked to my dad and asked him what's going on and he said the plumber said we received a call from Mr. Ross this morning about fixing the hot water heater. My dad told the plumber that Mr. Ford had been deceased and hasn't owned the house in years. That was the only time I've ever seen my dad truly speechless and confused. A few years back I was seeing a girl who lived in a house with a couple of her friends that was built between 1870 and 1890. I just got this weird feeling whenever I was over there with her. I could never put my finger on it, but it was just an unsettling feeling. Terrible way to explain it, but it's the best way I can put it via typing. Odd things used to happen to the girls, like things going missing or odd creaks and groans in the house. Nothing to incline the house had a presence, but the girls swore there was something adrift with everything. The only thing I ever noticed was the beads they had hanging across the framework of the entrance of Butler's pantry would often sway with no apparent reason, but it was only ever one line, the second one in from the left. I thought it was odd but at the time didn't think much of it. However, after staying there a couple of times I kept having this reoccurring dream that only ever happened when I stayed there. The dream consisted of me walking through a forest with a voice muttering in the background, then a sudden and extremely loud intense roar of what is very reminiscent of wind howling would appear and something would then push me from behind and grab my ankles and drag me violently towards this black hole in the ground and I would awake just prior to falling down it in a hot sweat. This happened a dozen times and at the time I just put it down to weird nightmare. However the last time I had this dream, I awoke in a sweat but I could almost swear I heard a distant voice telling me to leave, that wasn't even the scary part. I sleep without a top on and I went to the bathroom vanity to freshen up after my sweat and I had a red mark on my back. It was one of those marks you receive when you are whipped or have some form of pressure applied, almost like a bruise. After that I couldn't stay there anymore, and the girl and I went our separate ways. I don't really believe in the paranormal, more on the belief that the mind has a habit of conjuring fear and paranoia and creating the illusion of something that is there when it really isn't. But that whole experience really unsettled me, to the point I didn't sleep well for months and even now I just got the goosebumps and shivers typing this. My uncle was in a cult in the 80s and he said one of the many things they did together was a drug called Three Rings, he never knew what exactly it was but it was a hallucinogenic or DMT, something of that nature. The ritual was one of the members would take three rings and knock on the door for permission for the others to go. When I asked him what the fuck any of that meant, he just said when someone took three rings, they went to another place called Sebastian and that Sebastian is basically an alternate reality to ours, basically our reality but with certain variations compared to our reality. In order to go, you have to knock on the door and someone from that side gives permission for you to enter. He said Sebastian has a shadow continent to the west of South America and that they were an isolationist superpower and that there's a benevolent subterranean Mesoamerican civilization who live underneath the people on the surface. Their cities are underneath the forest floor and they can see through the soil like it's glass, they also essentially look like modern humans but they have more vestigial features from Neanderthals and other older species of humans we haven't discovered yet. They also run a shadow economy that affects the economy of the civilization on the surface and that only a few people in the government on the surface know they exist. I asked him a lot of questions about Sebastian like what's going on there, how it even exists, 
etc. He tells me that a curious man went through a black hole and survived and basically Xeroxed a copy of our universe over to where that black hole led. I asked him if they have ghosts slash aliens slash etc. And he says they have ghosts but they don't know what they are either and that they're not convinced aliens exist because all the Roswell and 1950s shit never happened over there. They did mention that they believed there were beings who were poking the corners of their reality and that they did not seem human. These other beings seemed mostly peaceful but they said one of them seemed extremely hostile and they're very afraid of them. They know Earth exists and they're curious about us, and they also mention that they believe the shadow continent exists in our reality as well and it either exists our and or it was destroyed. After a three hour or so conversation, I'm convinced my uncle is just a really imaginative storyteller but in the back of my mind, I start to wonder because the stuff he told me was so detailed. Like he was telling me plots to movies they had, weird niche movie genres, trends, subcultures, and just in general really in-depth cultural stuff. But that was the final time he told me about Sebastian, any time I asked after that, he would just flat out tell me to stop asking. After about 9 years, my uncle tells me that he tracked down other people who were in the cult, he says that most of them went off the grid but he found the ones who stayed. He invites them to his house and I tell him I want to be there and hear what they have to say because I still wonder after all those years. A month later, they all get together and go to his house and they're very hesitant to talk about Sebastian with me around but my uncle tells them I already know about it and they open up. They're all very quiet and they all seem very sad and they say that no one can go to Sebastian anymore because no one will answer the door anymore. The thing is they mention a lot of shit that my uncle was telling me about, like they're fucking sharing their favorite movies from Sebastian and books and they're so fluent with these details that I'm pretty much weirded the fuck out. So what gives? actual alternate reality or just cult members with a lot of time to make up shit? I've been writing about Sebastian with my uncle's help also, kind of documenting it. I'm not sure I'll be able to sell it anywhere but it would be nice for other people to just know about it. I started avidly praying when I was 19, to establish a sense of routine I would go outside, into my backyard, and walk circles around the azaleas. I was always anxious growing up and would see or hear things which were not there. To combat the momentary fear I would stare straight at the thing until the figment revealed the reality, example, see something in the shadow of the closet? Stare until the shadow was understood to be just a jacket. The first couple of nights going outside were anxiety laden, the tree tops looked like a collection of leering maws. Stealing my nerves I stared resolutely at the trees and prayed slash talked to God. One night, I had made one rotation around when coming back around the security light blinked off, startled I looked down from the tree tops and saw a large, hulking, shadow larger than a grown man but formless except for something which appeared to be a head. My heart raced, I stared at it but to my horror it didn't disappear, I became more aware of its presence. For a moment I thought someone had gotten into the backyard, yet it did not approach. My feet were lead yet all I wanted to do was run away. But, I had been running from shadows all of my life, imagined and real, and even though I was scared, I was angry. Pissed that my time to pray, to meditate, would be threatened by whatever the thing was looming and blocking out all of the light. I forced myself to breathe, to move my feet, not away but around. I continued my prayer, talking out loud instead of inside my own head. By the time I made my way back around the shape had gone and the light returned. To this day, 10 years later, I have not had an experience similar, and I still walk at night to pray. When I was about 13 I was staying at my best friend's house for her birthday sleepover with three quarters other friends. She lives in a house on an old American army base, long since decommissioned, on the east coast of the UK. I remember her mentioning things happening several times, their family computer was in a cupboard under the stairs. She said she would often be sitting in the living room and hear someone typing away, but no one would be in there. She also mentioned not liking getting up to go to the toilet in the middle of the night. The bedrooms were all off a corridor with the bathroom at the end, and even though the bathroom was literally next door to her room she hated it and always got a spooky feeling. So sleepovers were a thing that happened often with my group of friends at all of our houses, and part of me always hated them. I was a very nervous child and was absolutely terrified of the dark, still am, and scary movies. This one night we were all in the living room, the lights were out and everyone else had fallen asleep. This was pretty much my worst case scenario. I was laying there, and I heard this rhythmic thumping noise coming from the kitchen. I was so scared I just hid inside my sleeping bag and closed my eyes until it stopped. My friend's family had this mini pool table they would bring out and set up in the kitchen when we were all staying over. We'd been playing with it in the evening, then put the balls in the triangle in the center of the table before going to bed. We walked into the kitchen in the morning and all the balls were on the floor. 
During the night I had a clear view of the stairs before I hid my eyes and no one came downstairs, so I'm certain it wasn't her family messing with us. I hated staying there after that.